just a super short video to talk about how to make your own dancing cane or your wand for wanding. Wanding is sort of the new name for having a wand that flies all around and that you have control over. So this is actually intended for my Smart Camps kids, but anybody that has a serious interest in magic and looks up my webpage is welcome to follow along. So, and there's some information here from having done this for a period of time that I think will be really useful. The first thing to think about when you're making your own dancing cane is that there are really no strict rules as far as the size or the shape or anything like that. People will tell you that there are, but we've had just about anything work. So in this case, I was going to go to the hardware store because in class we just practiced with a, a little piece of wooden dowel from probably a 3 16 very lightweight wooden dowel that I got at the hardware store. Uh, Home Depot and Lowe's both has a rack that have the dowels in them. Uh, but I didn't have those with me, so laying around my yard was this piece of an aluminum, I think it was part of a TV antenna. So I just lopped off a piece. Uh, it's a little over two feet long, probably about two feet, four or five inches. But again, the measurements with regard to that are totally not critical. You can, if you make it shorter, it's a wand. If you make it longer, it's a cane. I want to say very quickly too that on eBay or Amazon, you can find dancing canes if you look them up. They're as cheap as like 10 to 15 bucks sometimes. And a real nice one is maybe 24, 25 bucks. So at first you think, hey, that's the way to go for sure is just to pick one up ready made. But every single one I've gotten, I've bought four or five over the years, has been a piece of junk that didn't work. <laughs> so actually making it yourself out of a stick, uh, or if you buy one from one of those sources, one of the less expensive ones, uh, by knowing how to make one, I'll you'll be able to modify it so that it will work properly. So every one that I ever bought from uh, an internet provider uh, always had the balance point directly in the middle and it just flopped around and it didn't work right. So by moving your balance point, uh, that's gonna be the main issue. So all you do is you start with uh, you know whatever you've got, a stick, a piece of aluminum, and measure so that you do find the exact center and I'm just gonna mark the center with a pen. And my old trick for doing that is to just have the same distance measured from either side, which leaves a gap. And I can actually see my center point. So the center is in between those two lines. I've got that mark actually already made. And if I were to take the ruler now and go one half inch above that point, uh, that's going to be our balance point. The test for a good dancing cane or a wand for wanding is once we've run the string through it, we're going to uh, balance it. And when you balance it from side to side and let go of the wand, it should slowly rock into an upright position. When that is the case, your balance point is absolutely ideal. So all we've got to do to do that, we've now marked a half inch uh, up from the absolute center point. I should mention as well, Sometimes there's a little dialing in to be done and you may have different tastes with your cane. So it's possible that uh, you may like the balance a little more towards center and there's nothing in the world wrong with putting two or three holes, finding an exact balance point. And if you're working with a cheap piece of doweling or something like this, you can decide on your size, get it balanced exactly the way you like it, and then take another piece of doweling, it only costs 50, 60 cents for another piece of doweling, uh, and put the hole in exactly the place that you found if you don't like having a couple of holes. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drill that single hole, we'll get a close up on that, and then we'll come back and we'll do some testing for our cane. So there's really nothing more to it than that. Our cane is <laughs> nearly done. One single hole in the right place, the right length of cane. Actually, the right length of cane isn't all that important. And the next thing to talk about is thread. So with your dancing cane, when we're practicing in the classroom, and even when I'm practicing in the studio here, I'll just use some upholstery thread. You can get this at any fabric store. It's so strong that you really almost can't break it with your hands. You'd probably dig into your hand before you'd break it. And that way you can throw that cane around, you can be a ninja with it, put on some great music, dance around with it, practice all those different moves. It's just a wonderful, wonderful way to uh, spend a few minutes. It's good exercise. I always think the kids love yo-yos and the kids love the fidget spinner. This is even better than both things and it looks totally amazing. So a little bit of upholstery thread makes a great loop. We're gonna start off with something a little bit lighter here. Uh, I've also got three pound fishing line. So the fishing line of this type is usually only found in the better sporting goods stores. 
You, you might find it at a big department store, but for the most part, this is the type of fishing line that ties the fly on the end of the line. So it's only like anywhere from one to three pounds. This, for almost any performance environment, is actually a spectacularly good uh, dancing cane thread. So you, if you're five feet away from somebody, the lighting is subdued, absolutely invisible, beautiful, beautiful for a dancing cane effect. Magic store thread. This is the gold standard. So if you're doing a performance for a group of people and you really want to have your dancing cane be as professional as possible, not good for practicing because it breaks very, very easily. Uh, but once you've got the moves down, this from three feet away is invisible to anyone. You can order it online from a magic store. Uh, it's usually called weightlifter, or you can even ask for the thread that's used for dancing canes, although that varies quite a bit as to what they'll give you. Uh, and this from three, four feet away will not be seen even in the slightest subdued lighting. And it runs about $10 for a few turns wrapped around a card. So like most magic store things, it's, it's a little bit pricey, but for a real performance in front of real people, get some of this, have it on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna run uh, the upholstery thread through the hole that we drilled here. Uh, since this is a pipe with a piece of wooden doweling that's effortless, since it's a pipe, uh, I will take that little drill bit and I'll stick it through the hole because getting a thread to go through and, and catch the hole on the other side is pretty difficult. I'll wrap some thread around the drill bit, I'll pull it through and I'll be right back and I'll show you the exact length because that is also critical. So just to clarify here with our fishing line, uh, it simply is a fishing line which goes down, goes through the hole in the cane, and then it's tied at the top in a loop, continuous loop all the way around. You slip your middle finger through, and the distance should give you about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch when you let go of the cane uh, between the tip of the cane and your finger. And you need that little gap so that when the cane flies by, it won't catch your hand on the way by. And that is the whole setup for having a dancing cane. So we haven't tried this one yet. Give it a <clears throat> very quick drop here, and we'll see if, uh, if this one's gonna work. Like I said, it was made out of a piece of something I found in the backyard, so I don't know about the balance. So let's see, drum roll please. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that looks good. Looks like it's flying to me. And of course, the moves for the dancing cane that we drilled on in class, I'll go over very quickly here. There's the rising cane, where you will just gesture with your fingers. And look at that, the cane rises in your hand. That's accomplished, you can see it from the side. From the front, it's just a wonderful illusion. From the side, here's what's actually happening. We've got our string right here coming from the cane. I get it in between my thumb and my first finger so that I can lower it or raise it by pulling it backward or forward. And then your audience is in front of you. So you don't move this hand. This hand, you hold it steady and in place and you gesture so that it seems like it's your magic that's doing it. And you just move the hand that's holding the cane forward and the cane will rise in your hand as if by magic. The next move is the classic move and that's usually you act very casual. Always remember that even though your left hand, well depending on which hand you've got the thread on, but the hand that is not connected to the cane, you want to use that hand as much or maybe even more than the hand which is connected to it. Uh, a lot of first time cane people will you know do this and everybody can see that that's connected to a string but when you bring the other hand into it and it seems like that other hand has something to do with the magic that is where the illusion really gets going. So the classic move then is to do circles. Sometimes I'll pinch here with my hand, point your fingers down, and let the cane circle your hand. That's a really good way to get to learn it. And then as you get better and better, you can flatten that hand out more and more. You can also bump it up a bit like that. And it's a great way just, just practicing that for a while. Once you've got the basic motion down, so it's going round and round, then you gesture side to side, right? And you can keep that cane nice and level. And the last move, the advanced move is, once you get into that position again where the thread is going through your hand to the cane, the same position that you would rise and drop the cane from, you can do a spin. So I've got it in that position and I spin it and I let it fall a little bit so it'll turn and it'll spin and then when I pull this hand I can bring it back up. So we can do that a lot more dramatically. <laughs> And those are your basic moves for the dancing cane and the basic explanation for how each of the moves works. Now, I always like that some of the good magicians will do that right on the palm of their hand. I haven't practiced that in a while, but you can really get it up there high, and that looks completely amazing to somebody that's convinced that there might be a string attached, because how could it be spinning with a string attached? 
So have a wonderful time with your dancing cane. Only takes a few minutes to make. I'd be surprised if you spent more than $2 to make one if you're using wooden doweling. Give it a coat of gold spray paint. I think I'll do that with this one here in a few minutes. You can put sparkles on it, whatever you like the best, and go out there and dance with your dancing cane.